What do web developers need? They don't need anything more than a Chromebook and some cloud service to do the deployments for them. But yet, web developers always want the latest and greatest, don't they? Well, here I've got the latest and greatest. You're curious, so we're gonna test this out. Starting from the left, my left, not your left. Well, maybe your left, I don't know. This is the M2 MacBook Air. This is gonna be our mm, control, I would say, because everything else is way more expensive and you gotta ask yourself, do you really need it after we do our tests? I don't know yet what's gonna happen, but let's figure this out. M1 Max, MacBook Pro, 64 gigs of RAM, M2 Pro, MacBook Pro, a pretty good developer machine for a lot less money than the Maxes. And the M2 Max, this is the beast of a machine, this is the newest. We're gonna kick things off with this test right here, it's on GitHub. It's a web tooling benchmark. I'll link to the repo down below in case you want to run it yourself on your own machine. After we do this test, we're going to do another one that's more of a real world build. <laughs> and we've got Schwarzenegger 2.0 ready for action. Let's do it. And they're off. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, while the tests are running, just a little bit about this particular test. It's called the Web Tooling Benchmark, and it contains interesting JavaScript workloads. And it uses a variety of common web developer tools. Each workload is executed a few times, and then it averages it out and reports the result. You can take a look at the repo and the readme to see what each one of these tests does. Uh, CoffeeScript, Esprit, Esprisma, uh, Post CSS, <laughs> Prettier, Source Map Terser, TypeScript, Uglify.js. All these are described there and what the test entails. That was pretty quick. Wow, they're done. I'm a little surprised here because, well, okay. So we expected the two new machines to do really well in this one because it's mostly a single core operation, right? So yeah, the M1 Max MacBook Pro built that in 9.7 seconds. The M2 Pro built that in 8.5, a little bit faster on the M1 Max. 8.3 over there, very close for these two machines. But the winner is the M2 MacBook Air with 8.05 seconds, the fastest time. Let's do that again, just to make sure. And let's go. Love this thing. Very close again to the previous times, but this time MacBook Air gets an even faster time. So 9.8 on the M1 Max, 8.5 on the M2 Pro, 8.2 on the M2 Max, and the M2 MacBook Air, the most underpowered machine out of all these gets 7.8. All right, we're not done yet. That was just the build time and the build time was pretty interesting to see anyway. That's not the benchmark though. The benchmark is actually a built CLI in the dist folder. So if we take a look at the dist folder, we have that CLI.js. That's the file that we need to run using node. That's the benchmark. So to run it, I just say node. Schwarzenegger's in my way sometimes, especially when I'm trying to type. <laughs> node dist CLI.js. That's what we need to run to get the benchmark mark score. I'm all set up and I'm also going to add the time command to get all the times. Let's go. <laughs> all right, so you can see that it's printing out the individual test results as it's running them. And then at the end, it's gonna finish up with the total score. Really curious about that TypeScript score because, well, I use TypeScript a lot. In fact, I don't remember the last time I worked on a JavaScript project, a pure JavaScript. It's been a while. We're done. Look at this. I timed the whole thing. So it took uh, 48 seconds, 48.2 on the M1 Max, 47.4 on the M2 Pro, 45.9 on the M2 Max and 47.5 on the M2 MacBook Air. The MacBook Air doesn't win this time, but it's keeping up with the big boys for a fraction of the cost. If you missed my MacBook Air tests, I did them a few months ago, check those out. And also uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you for watching the video. And if you enjoyed this content, consider subscribing. A lot of you are not subscribed uh, that are watching this content. So, hey, it's easy and it's free. Subscribe, you won't miss more videos like this. And if you like this one, give this a video a thumbs up. Thank you. Now let's take a look at the geometric mean result. It kind of corresponds to the total time that it took to run, but this is uh, more of the actual score of the benchmark. So we're comparing apples to apple. If you're looking up this test results on other sites or comparing it to your own. So we've got 22.5 runs per second. That's the lowest score and that's the M1 Max. The next lowest score is actually the M2 MacBook Air, but still not bad. 24.71 runs per second, then 25.15 runs per second on the M2 Max. MacBook Pro, M2 Pro, MacBook Pro, and 26.25. That's the fastest, the most number of runs per second on the M2 Max. And you can take a look at each one of the screens and pause the video if you need to see these in detail. Here's the M2 MacBook Air, here's the M1 Max MacBook Pro, M2 Pro MacBook Pro, and M2 Max MacBook Pro. TypeScript is doing really well on that new M2 Max and the M2 Pro. 
All right, let's move on to our next test. The next thing I'm gonna do to test this out is to go to Gatsby. Here we go, Gatsby JS. It's a popular site building application or framework, I should say. And you can use Gatsby, that's fine. And I've shown this on the channel before, how I built my site. But here, I'm actually going to build Gatsby, the tool itself, and uh, it's a pretty big one. If you're interested in doing this yourself, I'll link the repo down below and you can go and follow the instructions on how to do that, do it yourself. So the first thing to do is clone this entire Gatsby repository, which I've done. And uh, the next thing is, if you don't have Yarn installed, Gatsby uses Yarn instead of NPM. So just uh, NPM globally install Yarn, and then you're off to the races. Then all you do is just navigate to this folder, run Yarn, which will install all the dependencies. And after that, we're all set and ready to bootstrap. Not that bootstrap, bootstrap the actual framework. By the way, uh, the instructions I'm following are not on the readme, they're on the contribution guide. So you can go and check that out, uh, read the instructions on how to contribute. This is what you would do if you were to contribute to Gatsby, which is open source. So I've already done that on all these machines. The only thing left to do is run that bootstrap command. And if we take a look at uh, the code here in package.json, we have some scripts. There it is. This is the script we're running. We're going to be doing the bootstrap script. It's going to run all, check versions, learn and prepare. This is using uh, the learn up mono repo, by the way. So this takes a little bit of time and that's what we're trying to test. So I'm going to use time, npm, oh, not npm habits old habits yarn run bootstrap that's the command and we're ready to go let's do this <laughs> i don't even need to look at the screen i know that i trust the schwarzenegger 2.0 leave a comment down below do you trust the schwarzenegger and they're done and here is where the difference is going to be really noticeable and i'll explain to you why now the result is M1 Max 43 seconds, 43 and a half. M2 Pro, a big difference here, 36.7. M2 Max, big difference again, but not from the Pro, from the original Max. And this one is 36.2. And the M2 Air, 50. Now, what's happening here? Why such a big difference? Well, this is something to pay attention to if you're a web developer. While some of the JavaScript operations are going to be single threaded, like the previous test we saw, a build of this mono repo is actually using using multiple cores. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So what, what do you care? Well, guess what? The new machines have 12 cores and you see a big difference there. The M1 Max has only 10 cores and the M2 Air coming in last has only eight cores. So I'm gonna run this one more time. Oh, all right, Schwarzenegger, you gotta go. I'm sorry, you're in my way now. I'm not hurting your feelings, am I? All right, he doesn't have any feelings, that's fine. So I'm gonna run this one more time and here it is running. And let's take a look at activity monitor while it's running. All right, there we go. Here you can see see the CPU history. And while this build is happening, you can see that all the cores are showing activity. All the performance cores, this is the M1 Max, by the way, so it has a total of 10, uh, eight performance and two efficiency. And all the cores, even the efficiency ones, are being occupied by this, uh, by the processes that are happening. So do web developers have to care about this kind of thing? Well, I mean, the difference between the M2 MacBook Air building something pretty large here uh, is not that much of a difference. But if you're doing this a lot, throughout the day, then maybe it is. We're talking about a difference between 50 seconds and 36 seconds. Mileage may vary depending on the project size. And also most of the time, you're not gonna be rebuilding everything from scratch. You're doing incremental builds. So I would say if you're doing only web development and strictly web development, then the MacBook Air is a really good option. And I don't think you're gonna hurt that much by not getting one of these beastie machines. But if you're gonna be doing anything else, and that's for other videos, you can find them on the channel. Channel, that makes a difference. The multi-core versus single core, it makes a big difference. Also, keep in mind, MacBook Pros allow multiple monitors. If you're doing web development and you got multiple monitors going on, which a lot of us do, the MacBook Pros are gonna allow that, while the MacBook Air is only gonna have one external monitor and one onboard monitor. So you're limited to those two screens. Otherwise, you can save a lot of money by getting the M2 MacBook Air. And finally, one more thing I wanna add. Here's an example of what happens to the MacBook Air if you continue build over and over again. After a while, it gets really hot and the time goes from 50 seconds to one minute and 40 seconds because of thermal throttling. That does not happen on these machines that are bigger, that have more space, more heat dissipation and fans. The MacBook Air does not have fans. All right, folks, hopefully this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. I'll be back.